Hello everybody, this is Coder2J. I've got an exciting topic to cover today based on the viewer's request, Airflow email notifications, a feature you've been curious about. But that's not all. I wanna emphasize that your feedback is incredibly important to me and the channel's growth. If you have any video topic suggestions or feedback for me and the channel, I'm all ears. Just click the video request link in the video description and let me know. Let's dive into the exciting world of Airflow email notifications. To configure email notifications in Apache Airflow, we'll start by making modifications to the Airflow configuration file, airflow.cfg, which is located in the Airflow home directory. Here we are in the airflow.cfg file. Let's find the email section by searching email. By default, Airflow is already set up to use SMTP as the email backend, ensuring you receive alerts for DAG retries or failures. And so scrolling down, we find the SMTP section. Here's where we configure the SMTP server settings that Airflow will use to send those important email notifications. Make sure to set the SMTP host, SMTP user, SMTP password, and SMTP port with the appropriate values for your specific email server. For example, if you're using an Outlook email account such as Microsoft 365, Outlook, Hotmail, or Live.com, the server most you should use is smtp.office365.com and the port number is 587. Additionally, ensure that SMTP user and email from are set to your Outlook email address. Well, SMTP password should be the password you use to log into your Outlook account. In Docker, you can use these equivalent environment variables to set those configs. Next, let's create a new DAG or directed a cyclic graph called email underscore notification dot pi to test the email notification features, right? First, we need to import the necessary Python packages. Within the default arguments section, we have the flexibility to specify one or multiple recipients by separating your email addresses with commas. This allows us to easily define who should receive the email notifications. If you wish to customize the email alert trigger rules, you have the option to overwrite the default values. For instance, if you prefer not to receive email notifications when tasks or dags are on retry, you can set the email on retry parameter to false. However, for this demonstration, let's keep both parameters set to true. Then we give our DAG a proper ID and create a single task that runs a BAS command intentionally designed to throw an error. This will help us simulate a scenario where an email notification is triggered upon failure. Remember to save both the airflow.cfg file and the DAG file before starting Airflow. Once Airflow is up and running, log into the Airflow web server and start the email notification DAG. After a few seconds, we'll notice that the task fails. Now checking the logs, we can see that the task failed once and has been set up for a retry. An alert email has already been sent to the recipient email addresses we specified. During the second attempt, the task fails again, triggering another failure alert email. Let's log in to one of the recipient emails. In the inbox, we can see two new emails, one for up for retry and another for failure. These emails provide a concise summary of the encountered error, along with convenient links to access the detailed log information and mark the task as successful. If you prefer to use your Gmail account to send email notifications, we need to make a few adjustments. 
First, set the SNTP host to SNTP.gmail.com. Next, replace the SNTP user and email underscore from values with your Gmail address. However, it's important to note that we cannot use the login password for the SMTP password. Instead, we'll generate and use an app password specifically for this purpose. To generate an app password, ensure that you have two-step verification enabled in your Gmail account security settings. Visit myaccount.google.com slash appasswords and log in with your Gmail credentials. In the app password setup page, select mail as the app and provide a customized device name, such as Airflow. And click generate, and you'll see the app password displayed with a yellow background. Remember to copy and securely save this password as it won't be visible again. Next, replace the SMTP password in your configuration with the app password you just generated. For those running Airflow within a Docker environment, you can configure the equivalent environment variables as follows. Once you've made the necessary updates and configurations, ensure that you update the DAG version and restart Airflow. Then start our DAG and wait it a few seconds. You'll notice that the task fails, triggering an alert email to be sent to the specified recipients for both retry and failure cases. Check your email inbox and you should receive two alert emails successfully. Generally, hard coding passwords in a config file is not considered a good practice for security reasons. And fortunately, Airflow provides a convenient and secure way to retrieve the SMTP user and password from a connection. Let's explore how to configure this feature. Again, First, let's remove our sensitive email and password entries from the config file and comment out those lines to ensure they are not used. Now, scrolling up to the email configuration section, you will notice an email connection defined with the ID name SNTP default. This is where Airflow retrieves the email address and password from. If desired, you can modify the default email connection ID but for this demonstration, we will leave it unchanged. Let's update the DAC ID version, save the file, and then restart Airflow. After restarting, navigate to the Airflow web server UI. In the Airflow connections page, create a new connection. And simply select email as the connection type and set the connection ID to match the one specified in the configuration file which in this case is SMTP default. Now enter the appropriate values for the login and password fields, which correspond to your Gmail address and app password respectively. We'll save the connection and then start our DAG. Once the task fails, check the logs. You'll notice that it sends alert emails to the specified recipients for both retry and failure cases. And furthermore, in our email inbox, we can see that we have successfully received those two alert emails. This is truly amazing. We have now set up Airflow email notifications without explicitly exposing our email credentials. If you prefer not to use your personal Gmail or Outlook email for setting up alert emails, you can easily integrate with third-party email sending providers. In this demonstration, I will use SendGrid as an example. To get started, you can register for a SendGrid account by clicking the Start for Free button and then log in with your username and password. In the SendGrid account settings, it's necessary to authenticate a sender before sending any emails. You have the option to verify a single sender, like your personal or business email address, or you can choose to verify a domain that you own. Now for simplicity, we will focus on single sender verification. Once your email address is verified, navigate to the email API section and click on the integration guide and choose SMTP Relay as the setup method. 
Now provide a unique name for your API key and then click create key. With this, we have everything we need for the configuration. Ensure that you replace the SMTP host with smtpp.sendgrid.net and update the email from field to your verified email address. If you are running Airflow within a Docker environment, here is the equivalent configuration for the environment variables. As we will allow Airflow to retrieve the SMTP user and password from the connection, we no longer need to provide these two environment variables. You can either comment or delete them from the configuration. Once you've updated the DAG version and saved all the necessary changes, start Airflow. In the Airflow Connections page, search for the connection ID SMTP default and replace the login and password fields with the username and password provided in the SendGrid SMTP Relay Guide. We'll save the connection. Next, start the DAG. As expected, it fails, and the law confirms that alert emails have been sent to the specified recipients. In our email inbox, we can see that we have received the same two alert emails. You may notice that there is a label, the ascendgrid.net, after the from email address. This indicates that the emails were sent through the SendGrid SMTP server. That's it. We have learned how to configure email notifications in Apache Airflow with Outlook, Gmail, and third-party email providers like SendGrid. By following the steps outlined in this tutorial, you can effectively stay informed about the status of your workflows. If you found this tutorial helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more insightful airflow tips and tricks. We appreciate your support. If you have any questions or suggestions for future tutorials, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.